read the order. March 23rd, 2016, 7 p.m. Roll call, please. Mr. Kansky? Here. Mr. Karlovic? Here. Sister Roy? Here. Ms. Barry? Here. I'd like to record show that uh, Ms. Bello is um, under the weather tonight and unable to attend the meeting. Uh, she called me earlier. We'll dispense with normal order of business and move into case 2016-02, uh, that of Shane Vogel. Uh, this is at 926 Beverly Court, Lake, And this is for a garage accessory structure which is uh, about the 15 foot height requirement. We're at 19 plus feet. It was through the determination of the CBO when he went over the drawings and suggested that uh, Mr. Bobo uh, make application at the meeting, for this meeting. Uh, I see Mr. Bobo's here. Uh, it, uh, in light of your appeal, if you wish to add anything this evening, I'll ask that you be sworn in. I just swear to you real quick. <laughs> swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth of the guy content. Okay, fine. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Okay. We have uh, square footage is uh, in line. I think everybody has a copy of that. And um, location on the property, side yards is within uh, code. We have the height. That we're dealing with of 19 feet one and a quarter inches according to the drawing that I have here. This uh, this is four feet one and a quarter inches above the code that we have to work with. Uh, is there anything that Mr. Vogel would like to add to what I? Um, plain and simple, really, is I do have a office in house, and so basically I do physician billing. And so basically, I'm running out of room in my house. Um, most of my, actually all my business is internet based. And so I have employees that live out of the city. And so it's all done through the internet. And so basically, I'm legally held to keep hard copy files for seven years. And so just with the, as my clientele grows and everything of that nature, it is storage of records basically. And so you will notice the garage is actually 20 feet, 28 feet long, so six feet downstairs will be for storage, but it'll be, it has to be HIPAA compliant, so it's all secured and everything of that nature. And then I just need open files to appeals and reviews and everything of that nature. So it is more of just to actually, it's just for myself, because all of my employees are outside of the home, to be honest with you. And that's the main intention, plus I have three kids, so I have five cars, so that oh. killing two birds with one stone is really what I'm trying to do, to be honest with you. Okay, uh, we'll bring that back to the board. Um, uh, board, do you have any questions of Mr. Bowen? Kathy? I, um, no, I have a clarification question. Okay, go ahead. Um, the three foot uh, side, I, want, I, I didn't know if that was from the building or from the eave, and you mentioned it's all within code, but I just needed to understand that. Yeah, three, three, three foot from the property line for the structure, mm -hmm. and then, you know, it'll be uh, fire, you know, he'll drywall it and all that uh, on the inside and everything. So it's not from the eave, it's from the building? It's from the structure. Okay, thank you. Rich, anything? Um, <clears throat> how big, because I don't have any dimensions here at all, how big of a structure can you make, say, on one floor? Well, you can have, here, here's the rules on accessory buildings is 750 square feet or no more, 750 square feet. So you possibly, if you have enough room in your yard, you could, one floor could be 750 square feet. Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah, that 750 is a structure footprint. <laughs> yeah, right. That's and I was thinking, pretty much almost a small know, house. You I mean. could... If there was something bigger than this, I don't know how big his backyard is. It's 616 square feet. Oh, oh, yeah, for that structure, yeah. But I mean, you know, doesn't the accessory building go on a percentage of what your backyard is? 30%. 30%, 30 or 750 square feet. So he, this 750 square feet is 
around the 30 percent of his total back oh, yeah. It's either this or, whatever comes first. Yeah, this year. Mm -hmm. And usually it'll be the 750. Okay. The garage that's built onto the house, that is not classified as an accessory building. You're right, yes. Yeah, I saw that in the front there with the car on the side there. Yeah. Uh, I have had, just so the board knows, I have had uh, only one call. Um, she just said she was a neighbor to the other side of the uh, applicant, and she uh, just was wondering why she got the letter, and I explained it to her, and she said she had no issues at all. So that's the only call I did receive. And even the, the neighbor that it would butt up against his garage, I just wanted cosmetically to look well, just that was a, I had an addition put on my house, and it's done very well. So the garage, I want to be adjacent to his garage, so cosmetically it looks nice. But I live in a cul-de-sac, so he's really the only neighbor. Everybody else that's a backyard of everybody else, so yeah. pretty much nobody would really see it, to be honest with you. But, yeah. How about the people in the back of you? I uh, notice where your fence is and the house in the back. Correct, there. yes. Um, I don't know if a letter was sent to them. Yeah. Place, so, yeah, it's, yeah. We did almost like a circle around. 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 I mean, the 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 first around. Oh. There's a picture. But as you can see, the drawing—I mean, cosmetically—it's a—it's an attractive oh, building. It's not going like, to be a shack by any means. So. No, no, just that one neighbor's one. She didn't identify herself, she just said she was the neighbor. Yeah, I was looking for the very section. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mendes, are you thinking about the uh, No, I, uh, you know, as a, I think uh, this will be a fine quality uh, project. I, you know, uh, he's going to use all the, match it into the house, and also he's uh, going to add some driveway. Um, I think all the driveway you I'm actually going to redo the driveway, and even for the addition, I plan on using the same people. I use like Clement Construction and H&M Concrete, everybody that is local is pretty much what I'm going to do. The same so principle. Not only there is he going to re have another structure, but he's also going to redo his whole driveway mm -hmm. too. So, um, no, I, I have no issues. Um, I was wondering about... <clears throat> Are you going to have any bathroom facilities yeah. or anything like that out there, running water yeah. or stuff like that? It's literally just think you walk out your back door and I can go do, do what I need to do. And so if I need to use the restroom, I will go there. So, no, it's not no plumbing or anything of that nature. So. Uh -huh. Okay. You will have to have, obviously, electricity. Electric, right. Oh, yeah, well. Yeah, and, and I mean, definitely with the heating and air, you know those units they put on the side, you know, yeah. for heating and air conditioning because the computers have to be cooled. All right, I, I have nothing further for myself. Um, with that, uh, regards to 2016-02, uh, Chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that case number 2016-02 concerning uh, the accessory building at 926 Beverly Court, Beverly Court yeah. uh, here in the city of East Lake, rejected by the City of East Lake, in reference to codified ordinance 114503. One three. Pardon? One three. One three. Sorry. Uh, 114513. Be granted, utilizing the variance powers of the board as stated in codified ordinance 116307, and <coughs> uh, keeping to the uh, max height of. Well, which word I would say that that 20% is not in there for the height. I mean, I know that's the policy we can use, but just so you know, there's no 20% rule in there for the height. But. Okay. So if you want, if that affects your decision at all, I'm not sure. Okay, we have 
a second? Second. Yeah, can you read the what it's going to be, or so that applicant knows? I don't know if he's. This is to the applicant is requesting a height variance, 19 plus feet, on the CBO's determination. Right. At 926 Beverly. And we're granting a variance of three feet for an 18 foot tall structure. Okay, Mr. Carlwick. Yeah. Mr. Leroy. Yeah. Ms. Barry. Yeah. And Mr. Kane. Yeah. Okay, we granted you 18 feet, and now uh, you'll work with the building department the rest of the way through right. with their construction drawings yeah. and such. Okay. And uh, give us till Monday to get our people to them, okay. and to so proceed with them. Perfect. You're free to leave. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye. Take care. All right, if everybody has their paperwork, hold it in front of you. Don't. Don't push it all over here right now because we have some changes we're making. Now we have um, minutes of March 9th. Everybody had a chance to review them? Move to approve. Second. Um, Mr. Carlwick? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Leroy? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Barry? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Kansky? Oh, abstain. I'm sorry. Yay. Oh. Okay. Accept it as printed. Okay. We have uh, no correspondence. Just the mail. Just the mail that we passed, passed around. There's an agenda there. And the planning. Oh, planning. We have uh, next meeting will be April 13th. At this time. Any questions of the locker director? We have nothing. Any questions of the building official? Do we have any uh, unanswered ideas that you guys wanted council to amend? I'm trying to think over the last year, we had some ideas. Well, there was, but I was told that it's a charter and it takes a little bit more than council's action to do what that was. Oh, was it a. That was about who appoints the secretary. Okay, yeah. But other than that, we didn't have anything to learn this week. No. The only other thing was, uh, how long are we supposed to keep cases? I've got to that question. Yeah, well, that would go with the Ohio, um, Ohio retention laws. Okay, so it's something that I, we have a schedule that should be in council chambers on our, our record retention schedule. Oh, okay, I can get a look. I think there's a boards and commissions Correct. section in there. And we may be going to uh, try to improve, not in, so much improve it, but update it uh, uh, at some point, maybe in the fall. Um, I've talked to the new finance lady, and uh, that's something we're going to look at. Okay. So at that point, um, if we do something with record retentions, we would go to all the board to see if they had anything that... You know, like you said, dispose of or how many years and all that. So we only need one copy of everything, so I'm sure keep a multiple copy. Yes, I spent more than two hours today, just in yeah, seven you can, years. You can discard it, you only oh. one copy. I do have a record retention list I think I can give you to show you. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> another thing that uh, I dug into, in the past we had cassettes for a tape recorder, then we went to our micro cassettes, and now we have digital. Um, that, that this may be a problem at some point in time, but right now I is yes. an actual file drawer of tapes, full, neatly stacked, and yeah. marked when they were used. But there's no reason to do that. You're allowed to just tape over them after a certain number, of, as long as you set a schedule that they're going to be taped over when they're going to be taped over. They can right. be taped over in 30 days. It's the same thing with the record retention. Yeah. Yeah. We okay. tape over. We'll probably <laughs> never. Nobody ever told anybody. They just kept taping them. Right. This, as long as those whatever was on those tapes for that particular meeting may have been transcribed into hard copy. doesn't even need to be that. I mean, if you imagine dispatch tapes, as long as you have a schedule of 
a tape. They're going to be taped over. As soon as those tapes are done and it rolls over the next tape, you can just tape right over. Yeah. But now we don't have to worry about it because the digital right. version all that lose more space, you know. Okay. But there's a record retention schedule. It's an old-fashioned one. Deb should, or a council is we where it is. Yeah. So there might be a subsection directly for boards and commissioners. Is it, uh, now that they've been spending some time in there, it, uh, there's records going back to the 50s. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's kind of sad because, <laughs> too bad I mean, you remember some of this stuff. <laughs> but, and, you know, you touch them and they're falling apart. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, oh man, it's, it's really too bad. But whoever made that application back then is probably no longer even in the city, you know, and if the property is even still standing. Yeah. So um, it's, it's. Well, the first thing you can do is you don't need to keep copies. You only have one copy. You can discard the other copy. Right. So that's okay, that's it. I did that'll save us some space. Yeah. Because sometimes you end up with 10 different versions of the plan, so you don't need 10 different versions. You can right. discard them. Okay. And then tomorrow I have a little bit more to do if my wife lets me out. <laughs> but other than that, uh, good night, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. Right. some more. And, um, we have nothing more on the agenda. We're clear on that. And the April 13th is our next meeting. Once around. Rich, anything else? Oh, I have nothing, Mr. Chairman. Jonathan? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, other than I uh, wish everybody a happy Easter. I myself will be in a slightly warmer climate. Oh, uh, they're <laughs> <laughs> Not the rings or anything. <laughs> but, yeah. but I will be yeah, thinking of you all. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be thinking of you too. Yeah. <laughs> Kathy, anything? Not really. Are we really fair over that? Yes. <laughs> and, come on, anything? Nope. Okay, have nothing more. Motion to adjourn. Motion Motion to adjourn. adjourn. Second. Ready? Mr. Garland? Yeah. Mr. Leroy? Yeah. Ms. Barry? Yeah. And Mr. Kim? Yeah. 718.